This morning on CBS 2 News, hearings on the January 6th Capitol riot head to TV tonight. What the panel is expected to present to viewers. Plus, a local nonprofit looking for their stolen equipment, the impact on Life's Kitchen, and how you can help. Plus, the right time to buy a house in the Treasure Valley, why some lenders are saying it's right now. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on June 9th, 2022. Beautiful clear skies to kick off the morning and it is a beautiful view out there at Sun Valley. Good morning, Nate. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Yeah, I couldn't resist uh, this shot this morning with the clear skies. Boy, the stars are out in full swing uh, over the Sun Valley area. So, hey, still some snow up in our mountain areas. Yeah, all the cool weather we've had uh, throughout springs had a kept some of the snowpack up in the mountain areas. It's going to continue to help us uh, fill some of the reservoirs and streams as we continue into summer. So clouds and radar. We had a little bit of light precipitation yesterday. This morning it's quiet. We have some high clouds that are going to pass by throughout some of the day today, but uh, pretty quiet for your Thursday overall. Temperatures are warming up as well with the clear skies after all the cloud cover yesterday, and we're going to continue this west southwest flow into Friday. Only uh, worry we might have is a little bit of moisture passing to the north of us. Some of that may clip those northern mountain areas areas on Friday, especially on Saturday into Sunday. We're going to start to see some big changes. So as we look at your adventure cast uh, for your Thursday, as you get outside, maybe you're going to grab the mountain bike. Boy, it should be a beautiful day. Uh, about 65 at 9 o'clock, so very comfortable. Still sunny, 75 around noon. We're going to warm another 10 degrees throughout the afternoon and evening. In fact, 86 will be the high today. Sarah. Ooh, a picture perfect day. Get out and enjoy it. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good, running smoothly, seeing a few headlights out there this morning as well, but everything looking good. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. The House panel investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is going to primetime tonight. They'll begin a series of televised public hearings that will present witness accounts and videos from the riot nearly a year and a half ago. I can say that certainly one of the themes that we will be fleshing out is the, the fact that in advance of the 6th uh, that there was an understanding of the propensity for violence that day. However, many GOP lawmakers have been sharply critical of the panel, calling it overly partisan. This committee is not about seeking the truth. It is a smear campaign against President Donald Trump. The committee has interviewed around 1,000 witnesses and received over 140,000 documents in connection with the attack and its coordination. Now tonight, committee members are expected to hear from a U.S. Capitol police officer and a filmmaker who documented movements around the Capitol that morning. Well, turning now, federal agents raided the home of a California man. He's charged with attempted murder for Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Now, an affidavit filed in court says the man, he brought a gun with the intent to break into the justice's home. Now, it states that he took a cab to Kavanaugh's house with a backpack full of weapons, and this is the suspicious part. He then walked down the street and called 911 for help. Chuck, that it was right here, and... Uh... A nice family, good neighbors. Court documents state that the man was upset about the leaked Supreme Court draft decision to possibly overturn Roe v. Wade and was concerned that Kavanaugh would vote to overturn gun laws. No word on why he called police on himself. Developing news this morning here in Idaho, an Oregon man now facing charges of aggravated assault, resisting officers, and possession of a controlled substance. This is a video from around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. It's out on Shaw Mountain Road just north of Boise. Now, Boise police pulled out their guns as they were taking in this man that they say pulled a gun on a tow truck driver. They say he pointed a gun following an argument. Well, Ada County Sheriffs, they need your help in identifying a man who threw a rock, breaking a window at the Ada County Courthouse. Now take a look at this. Police say this man committed the vandalism just after midnight on May 19th. Now, if you have any information on who this is, take a good look. Call the Ada County Sheriff's Office. Well, a local nonprofit, they need your help finding the thieves that stole their equipment. Now, CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she explains that Life's Kitchen needs it back to help continue serving our community. You, you try to understand why someone, whether we're nonprofit or not, would invade your property and take something that's that's been there. What? Why? 
Tammy Johnson, executive director for Life's Kitchen, was shocked after she found out multiple pieces of cooking equipment and a trailer were stolen from them. We brought it out this year, used it for the first time at Idaho Gives, and uh, parked it in the same spot we've parked it in for almost a little over a year since we've been at our Fairview location, and um, noticed that it was gone. Some items included griddles, folding tables, propane tanks, and much more. A costly loss. To replace it'll probably be around 4000 or to 5000 by the time we're all done with the trailer and the equipment that was inside it. But it's not just a financial hit. Since 2003, Life's Kitchen has been serving second chances giving young adults the opportunity to receive life skills in job training. They spend about 650 hours and they're working in the kitchen. They work in the back of the house, front of the house, on the line, the banquet room, learning every aspect of the business. Johnson said the Hot Tots trailer played a big role in that. That was one of their ways to say this would be an opportunity that, they, that your young adults may be able to look at this and go, can I do something like this? Michaela Elich, CBS2 News. If you do know anything about the theft, you're asked to call Boise Police or leave a tip with Crime Stoppers. That number is 208-343-COPS. Well, mortgage rates are on the rise and it's a challenging market, especially for our first time home buyers. A difference in 2% of an interest rate could be anywhere from 400 to 700 dollars a month in a, in a monthly payment, which really can be quite a bit and unfortunately has priced so many home buyers out of the market, unfortunately. And forecasters, they don't anticipate a drop for at least a couple of years. While fewer people are applying for a mortgage, more homes in Idaho are going up for sale and staying on the market longer. A good thing for buyers. We are definitely seeing uh, lower offers. We're seeing price reductions and we're seeing seller concessions for sure. But that's normal. So what does this all mean? Lenders say rates may be significantly higher than last year, but they are still historically very low. And with one with more sellers willing to take lower offers, you may be locking yourself into a better payment plan in the future. Their best advice, though, find out what you're pre-qualified for before you start looking out for homes. Now, a summer free meal kickoff event is starting for the West Ada schools happening as of today. They're offering free meals for kids under 18 years old at several spots this summer. To find out more, head to our website, IdahoNews.com. And summer, it's one of the hardest times of the year for families struggling with food insecurity. We know this, and that's why CBS2 has teamed up with the Western Idaho Fair. We're raising money for the Idaho Food Bank to mark their 125th anniversary. We're asking you to donate $125 to the food bank. Now, for every dollar donated, the food bank, they can stretch it into four meals. You'll find a link on IdahoNews.com if you'd like to donate. And we do want to say thank you to our community and thanks to your generosity, our hygiene drive came to a successful close. Now we partnered with News Talk KBOI to collect donations for the Salvation Army. Now many of you stop by CBS2 with everything from soap to shampoo, toothpaste, mouthwash, you name it. And it's all going to local families in need. Now, if you still want to help, you can donate money through IdahoNews.com. Again, thank you for all of your generosity, your kindness. It definitely makes a difference. Yeah, and you were out there yesterday yeah. for the entire, actually leading coverage on it. So thank leading you for coverage. being out there. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's nice. I mean, we cover events like that yeah. and we talk about them. We show pictures of them, but having it here at the studio and getting to see the donations being dropped off and seeing how much we accumulated and how many people, yeah, it's uh, how many folks it's going to help out. Uh, it's awesome. And we, again, we appreciate all of your generosity. It was fun to meet some of you and uh, to, yeah, experience yeah. that. So yeah, you met a lot of us, a lot of viewers, which was were, pretty yeah, fun. There was a lot of great donations. So <laughs> thanks for thanks. coming out. And uh, we yeah, we've got the food drive now, so something else to look yeah. forward to. Uh, looking forward to, as well as these temperatures, Nate. I yes. am ready. I'm loving uh, the forecast today, tomorrow. Yeah. Things are looking pretty great, and I uh, have yeah, got more rain, folks. Let's kind of break down what we're expecting to see. A bit of a roller coaster ride with our temperatures. In fact, as we head towards uh, the end of the week, the weekend, we're going uh, way above yesterday. In fact, with the clouds, a little bit of a drizzle sticking around. We only hit 72 in Boise, so 86 will be the high today as we're clear uh, outside this morning. Southwest flow is going to be in place up to. 90 tomorrow, 
Could be our first 90 of the season. We were expecting one last week. We got just shy of there. Uh, we might get just shy of it as well tomorrow, but we're getting close. 86 on Saturday. We fall to 70 on Sunday and 65 on Monday. So way below average. Normal high is now 79 degrees. So uh, going to be quite cool on Monday thanks to this next weather maker that's going to be pushing through. So warming temps as we talked about through Friday. There's a potent storm system we're tracking over the weekend. It looks like it could track right through Idaho, the core of the storm after tapping into subtropical moisture. So plan on some increasing thunder showers late Saturday, especially for the mountain areas to the north and heavy rain is even possible on Sunday. In fact, uh, talking about potential with that subtropical mass uh, of moisture for maybe even some flash flooding concerns, rising streams and rivers, of course, across the higher elevations. So uh, we'll be watching that into the weekend. Here's the chances of moisture for the mountains, a good 60 to 70 percent chance. So some uh, scattered to widespread or numerous showers plan on rain on thunder showers on Sunday, lingering into Monday, walking you through some of the forecast with the map. So southwest flow increasing. If we watch out towards the west, off in the tropics, uh, you can see that core of the storm system moving along that westerly flow, tapping into or scooping up some of that subtropical moisture. This is Sunday afternoon. Fairly widespread showers are possible and expected. The core of the storm rotates through Idaho and will linger with some shower activity Monday maybe even Tuesday next week. Okay, so kind of sticking around a little bit. So if anybody wants to get out, maybe barbecue this weekend, best chance Saturday. Today, tomorrow and Saturday yeah, into the early afternoon. Perfect. Could get a little dicey in the afternoon, in yep. the uh, late afternoon and evening. Just plan it out and yep. you'll have a great time. Thank That's you, right. Nate. <laughs> all right, let's take a live look outside CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good out there. A few more cars, but yeah, our main roads, secondary roads looking good. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a marine plane crash in California has people asking for answers. What we know about the investigation as of this morning. Plus, the president at the Summit of the Americas, what he's asking from other world leaders. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It was the Guinness record for this is just 13 seconds. A lot of great guesses. I thought it was Rubik's Cube, guys, but the answer was the shortest music concert. Yeah, that's quick, guys, within a breath. Now for today's question. Surprisingly, over 6,000 Americans injure themselves with one of these every single year. All right, folks, what is it? Five fifteen on your Thursday. Welcome back. Local forecast is for Idaho City. Temperatures uh, up in the Idaho City area about eighty one today. You should have lots of sunshine. Gorgeous uh, weather to kick off uh, Thursday overnight. Partly cloudy. Fifty six tomorrow. Plan on uh, yeah more sun and clouds. Temperatures a little warmer though. About eighty four in Idaho City for the high. Thank you, Nate. Developing news and investigation this morning into what caused a U.S. Marine plane with five people to crash. Now, the United States Marine Corps says the aircraft crashed near Glamis, California, just yesterday afternoon. This is a look at that crash site. Now, officials say they're waiting for confirmation on the status of the five Marines that were on board. Now, some rumors were circulating online that the aircraft had a nuclear material or had nuclear material on board, but the military says that wasn't the case. Well, in the meantime, President Joe Biden is at the Summit of America's meeting. He's calling for a renewed focus on democracy, but some world leaders are already upset with the president. John Lawrence reports. President Joe Biden is hosting close to two dozen leaders from Latin America at the ninth Summit of the Americas. Critical work continues at this year's summit, a place for solutions. The president is calling for cooperation and a renewed focus on the importance of a government by the people. We have an opportunity for us to come together around some bold ideas, ambitious actions, and to demonstrate to our people the incredible power of democracies to deliver concrete benefits and make life better for everyone, everyone. Biden also previewed a new economic framework that his administration hopes other countries will take part in over the next few months. Together, we have to invest in making sure our trade is sustainable and responsible in creating supply chains that are more resilient, more secure, and more sustainable. But there is an elephant in the room. This event is just like his approach to Latin America has been since he got to the White House. 
uh, weak, disorganized, and misguided. The autocratic governments of Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua were excluded from the three-day summit, and that caused some other leaders, including the president of Mexico, to boycott. Our Latin American allies are highly frustrated. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Despite the snub from Mexican President Obrador, he says he and Biden will meet next month in Washington. All right, Nate. So some wet weather moving our way for the weekend, but yeah. still the warm up is on the way, at least for the next couple of days. Yeah, at least we've got a nice couple of days uh, after yesterday was just kind of gloomy, overcast, a little drizzly. We only ended up with about a hundredth, two hundredth of an inch of rain. So it wasn't a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and most of that fell during the midday while you were out of yes, the hygiene drive. <laughs> while we were out of the hygiene drive. So yeah, a lot of it was just supposed to be in the mountains. Yesterday was a little bit of a bust. Today, gorgeous weather, 86. Uh, it's going to be Phenomenal out there. Let's look outside this morning how we're kicking off your day. Start to hit, see hints of first light just barely from our studio camera. Uh, temperatures are cooler from yesterday morning. In fact, you'll note that as you step out early 54 degrees. Uh, southeast winds lower light, 6 miles per hour, and it feels like 54. Dew point 49, so the spread from the dew point to the temperature uh, is pretty minimal, so it feels a little muggy out there. In fact, I had some humidity, uh, some condensation kind of stuck on the windshield as I went out, uh, as we do have a pretty moist uh, atmosphere right now until things start to dry out or continue to dry out with the warmer temperatures into the afternoon. So 86 uh, for the high today, 90 on Friday, partly cloudy tomorrow. A bit toasty though with uh, with 90 in the forecast for your Friday. Plan on temperatures falling about four degrees on Saturday. We do have uh, clouds increasing, maybe even a chance of storms, especially over the northern mountain areas, but could see a thunder shower uh, Saturday evening, especially on Sunday. Showers and thunderstorms fairly widespread as far as uh, the moisture content goes. Uh, looks like a good half inch to an inch of moisture could fall in some of the valley locations, so we'll be watching for significant precipitation event on Sunday. Monday, a few showers cooler, 65, 70 Tuesday, back to 80 on Wednesday. So. Here's that springtime roller coaster ride with temperatures and with active weather out there. 75 in the mountains to 74 tomorrow. Showers and storms Saturday afternoon and evening. Uh, have heavy rain icon possibly in the mountain areas. So, uh, slight concern for some flash flooding, if not uh, some small streams and rivers, uh, possibly even expanding or swelling as we're going to be seeing some significant moisture over the mountain areas with snow levels down to about 6,000 feet by Sunday. Monday, just 50 degrees, 57 on Tuesday and 67 Wednesday next week. So getting back to normal eventually. Slowly but surely. Well, yeah. it's got to be Today, tomorrow, good. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be muggy a little bit this morning, you said? Yeah, a little bit muggy. It's a little bit humid out there this morning, but otherwise uh, should be really comfortable yeah. through midday and getting toasty this afternoon. All right, well, everything is looking pretty good out there. Let's take a look at our traffic cams. CBS 2 and News Talk KVOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good. Main roads, secondary roads running smooth. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS2 this morning, protecting babies from coronavirus. What one new study reveals could keep newborns safe from all sorts of illnesses. And later, the FBI raiding a Californian's home after a threat against a Supreme Court justice. What led up to the attempted attack? Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 523 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Breakthrough research could hold the secret to protecting babies against everything from coronavirus to even cancer. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what's been discovered. Hey there, everybody. We've known for a while now that even in COVID-19, that pregnant women produce what scientists call super antibodies to protect newborns, especially when given the vaccines. Now a new study just released in the journal Nature explains how. It turns out that when a woman is pregnant, what researchers call the sugar coating on the outside of antibodies gets what you might describe as superhuman powers to get into a cell to protect a growing baby. What we found is that pregnancy changes that coating, that sugar coating of the antibodies in a very, very subtle way with profound implications for expanding their scope of protection 
by uniquely stimulating babies' immune cells in a very special way. In laboratory experiments, a team of researchers led by Dr. Sing Sing Wei and Dr. John Erickson of Ohio's Cincinnati Children's Hospital say it's sort of like a switch gets turned on when mom gets pregnant to pass the protection to baby. That protection often lasts for months, it appears, even after a child is born. So why is this such an important discovery? There's a lot of, I think, implications here. So one would be you know, to be able to turn the switch on, we know you need to at least have those antibodies in the first place. What's more is that since antibodies help fight off a specific bacteria, virus, or foreign substance in the blood, it's possible this information may also hold the secret to protecting more babies in the future from everything from COVID-19 to cancer. This is a, a kind of a new way that antibodies, these uh, sugars on the antibodies can be changed and how that might affect a lot of these other biological therapeutics that we're using, I think also uh, deserves a lot of study. Researchers now saying this is just more evidence that recommended vaccines that produce antibodies in pregnancy are so critical for a baby's future health, especially in those first few months of life. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Turning now to our coverage on coronavirus, we do have an increase in infections here on the Gem State. The latest numbers are showing more than a thousand new cases since last week's state update. Hospitalizations are also ticking up, but deaths are still low. They say this recent spike is likely due to graduation get togethers and Memorial Day weekend. Officials hope it'll level off again in the coming weeks. And still to come on CBS 2 News, Boise police draw their guns. What's next for this man after he was taken into custody at gunpoint? And here's what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. At 6 o'clock, we have the Capitol assault hearings. Then at 9, Bull, as well as at or 8 and 9, both Bull. Then you can join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget our question of the day. Surprisingly, over 6,000 Americans, they injure themselves with one of these every year. All right, folks, what are we thinking? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, hearings on the January 6th Capitol riot head to TV tonight. What the panel is expected to present to viewers. Plus, a local nonprofit looking for their stolen equipment, the impact on life's kitchen, and how you can help. Plus, the right time to buy a house in the Treasure Valley, why some lenders are saying it's right now. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. All right, folks, gorgeous weather to kick off uh, your Thursday. We do have some high in the sky clouds, uh, but otherwise we're going to see quite a bit of sunshine as it comes up this morning uh, right around 6 o'clock. Temperatures right now in Boise, 54, up in the Long Valley, 47. We've got a spread of 50s across Nampa, Ontario, 57, Ontario. Good morning, 54 in Mountain Home. Nampa sitting at 50 degrees. A west-southwest flow is in place this morning, so again, we are seeing some of those high in the sky clouds, but mostly sunshine is expected uh, to continue throughout the day today. Future cast again shows any moisture staying to the north of us. In fact, even into Friday, we'll see a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow, but uh, I think any moistures are going to skirt just to the north of us. Not expecting uh, any significant weather to happen tomorrow. Uh, temperatures are just going to get a little bit hotter than they are today. In fact, let's kind of break down what you can expect to see for your Thursday. Uh, about 65 as you head out at 9 o'clock. We've got mostly clear and comfortable conditions. Uh, again, sunny and 75, if not mostly sunny skies. Beautiful at lunchtime and then getting warm 86 or so for our high later this afternoon. Again, mainly sunshine continuing. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, lots of sunshine. Looking forward to that. Get out and enjoy it. We're seeing first light on our traffic cams this morning. We do bring you stream traffic all morning long. It's looking good out there. Everything on our main roads, even secondary roads, smooth sailing. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. The House panel investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is going to prime time tonight. They'll begin with a series of televised public hearings that will present witness accounts and videos from the riot nearly a year and a half ago. 
I can say that certainly one of the themes that we will be fleshing out is the the fact that in advance of the 6th, uh, that there was an understanding of the propensity for violence that day. However, many GOP lawmakers have been sharp critically of the panel, calling it overly partisan. This committee is not about seeking the truth. It is a smear campaign against President Donald Trump. The committee has interviewed about 1,000 witnesses and received more than 140,000 documents in connection with the attack and its coordination. Now tonight, committee members are expected to hear from a U.S. Capitol police officer and a filmmaker who documented movements around the Capitol that morning. Well, federal agents raided the home of a man in California. He's being charged with an attempt to murder Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Now, an affidavit filed in court says the man brought a gun with intent to break into the justice's home. Now, it states that he took a cab to Justice Kavanaugh's house with a backpack full of weapons, and this is the suspicious part. He then walked down the street and called 911 for help. Chuck, that it was right here, and uh, a nice family, good neighbors. Court documents state the man was upset about the leak from the recent Supreme Court draft decision to possibly overturn Roe v. Wade. He was also concerned with Kavanaugh voting to overturn gun laws. No word on why he called police on himself. Well, here in Idaho, an Oregon man is now facing charges of aggravated assault, resisting officers, and possession of a controlled substance. Now, this video from around 4 yesterday afternoon was out on Shaw Mountain Road in North Boise. Boise police pulled out their guns as they were taking in this man. They say pulled a gun on a tow truck driver. They say he pointed a gun after an argument. And Ada County sheriffs need your help in identifying a man who threw a rock, breaking an Ada County courthouse window. Take a look at this photo. Police say this man committed the vandalism just after midnight on May 19th. Now, if you have any information on just who this is, give a call to the Ada County Sheriff's Office. Well, a local nonprofit needs your help finding the thieves that stole their equipment. And CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains that Life's Kitchen needs it back to keep serving our community. You, you try to understand why someone, whether we're nonprofit or not, would invade your property and take something that's that's been there. What? Why? Tammy Johnson, executive director for Life's Kitchen, was shocked after she found out multiple pieces of cooking equipment and a trailer were stolen from them. We brought it out this year, used it for the first time at Idaho Gives, and uh, parked it in the same spot we've parked it in for almost a little over a year since we've been at our Fairview location, and um, noticed that it was gone. Some items included griddles, folding tables, propane tanks, and much more. A costly loss. To replace it, will probably be around 4000 or to 5,000 by the time we're all done with the trailer and the equipment that was inside it. But it's not just a financial hit. Since 2003, Life's Kitchen has been serving second chances, giving young adults the opportunity to receive life skills in job training. They spend about 650 hours and they're working in the kitchen. They work in the back of the house, front of the house, on the line, the banquet room, learning every aspect of the business. Johnson said the Hot Tots trailer played a big role in that. That was one of their ways to say this would be an opportunity to think that your young adults may be able to look at this and go, can I do something like this? Michaela Elich, CBS 2 News. If you do know anything about this theft, you can call Boise Police or leave a tip with Crime Stoppers. That's 208-343-COPS. Mortgage rates, they're on the rise this morning, and it's a challenging market, especially for our first-time home buyers. A difference in 2% of an interest rate could be anywhere from $400 to $700 a month in a, in a monthly payment, which really can be quite a bit and unfortunately has priced so many home buyers out of the market, unfortunately. In the meantime, forecasters, they don't anticipate a drop for at least a couple more years, but with fewer people applying for a mortgage, more homes in Idaho are going up for sale and staying on the market longer. A good thing for our buyers. We are definitely seeing uh, lower offers. We're seeing price reductions and we're seeing seller concessions for sure, but that's normal. 
So what does this all mean? Lenders say that rates may be significantly higher than last year, but they say they're still historically very low. And with more sellers willing to take lower offers, you may be locking yourself into a better payment plan in the future. But their best advice is to find out what you're pre-qualified for first before you even start looking into homes. Well, a summer free meal kickoff event for West Ada schools. It's happening as of today. They're offering free meals for kids under 18. It's at several spots this summer. Now the kickoff is at Tully Park in Meridian, though these will be going on all summer long. Now this one today runs from 12 to 1245. There'll be raffles as well as lots of fun to see where and when to get free summer meals. Head on over to IdahoNews.com. And as we know, summer, it's one of the hardest times of the years for families struggling with food insecurity. That's why CBS2, we're teaming up with the Western Idaho Fair to raise money for the Idaho Food Bank. It's to mark the fair's 125th anniversary. Now, for every dollar donated, the food bank can stretch it up into four meals. You'll find a link to donate. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. Com. And we want to say thank you to our community and thanks to your generosity, our hygiene drive came to a very successful close. Now we partnered with News Talk KBOI to collect donations for the Salvation Army. Now many of you stopped by CBS2 with everything from shampoo to soap, toothpaste, mouthwash, you name it. And it's all going to local families in need right here in Idaho. Now if you still want to help, you can donate money through IdahoNews.com. Again, thank you for all of your generosity, your kindness. It definitely makes a difference. Yeah, all the little things that we can do. You know, lots of people struggling this time of the year. Yeah. So again, with our hygiene drive, we also have a book drive that wasn't even mentioned as well. Oh, so yeah. lots of lots of ways to lots donate. Of opportunities. Lots of fun to see uh, people yeah. come out yesterday and their pets. <laughs> yeah, uh, to donate. Got to meet a lot of people. It was great to, to see some of you early in the morning, uh, and it's awesome to see the result, the end result, and how many families it's going to help out. So thank you for that. All right, well, maybe we're going to head out again today. Uh, yesterday was pretty cloudy, and we had a little bit of shower activity. Today it's Mainly sunny skies. Uh, again, mainly sunny skies. Uh, yeah, we talked about, we typically see high pressure, dry weather throughout the summer, which of course we usually end up talking about drought as well. Wanted to show you just a quick update on the drought monitor with all the moisture we've been seeing throughout spring. Many of us are saying, boy, this is the most moisture we've had in a long time. Aren't we out of the drought? Well, unfortunately, we're not uh, out of the woods just yet. In fact, we're still under moderate drought for a lot of the Treasure Valley and even parts of our area in southwest Idaho still in severe drought. South central, southeastern portions of Idaho, it even exceptional or extreme drought, excuse me, extreme, not exceptional uh, in some areas. And so we still need some more moisture. It has made an impact, though, a significant one on some of our river uh, systems. In fact, the Boise River system, uh, which is what feeds the Boise River, of course, is compiled of Anderson Ranch, uh, Arrow Rock, and Lucky Peak Reservoirs. Now they're sitting at 86% capacity, which that's pretty good. In fact, we're usually at our peak capacity in the next week or two, and we could hit our uh, average capacity for uh, this time of year, which would be great news, especially as we have a storm system lined up for the weekend. Uh, so again, that is looking good as far as how much uh, we're capturing, as well as we do have some additional snow melt that we're going to be seeing as temperatures continue to climb. And there's more moisture on the way. I mentioned the system Saturday into Sunday, lingering into Monday could be uh, Quite, it could pack quite a punch, I should say. In fact, here's kind of what we're expecting to see. So a nice warm up through today, tomorrow should hit maybe 90 tomorrow. It's in the forecast. We've got that potent storm for the weekend. Thunder showers plan on those uh, late Saturday, especially up north. And then we're looking at the potential for some heavy rain showers on Sunday. So Ooh, yeah, if you want to do that yeah. barbecue you mentioned uh, into the weekend, Today, tomorrow, Saturday into the early afternoon, but then after that, it might be kind of dicey. Yeah, so lots of opportunities, guys. But yeah, this weekend a little wet, a little unsettled, but <laughs> roller we'll get coaster it. ride. Yeah, into the weekend. Yeah, let's take a live look outside this morning. CBS Two News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Look out there this morning. Everything seems to be going well from all of our reports. Yeah, uh, main roads and secondary roads are looking good. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 6:70 a.m or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question is surprisingly over 6,000 Americans injure themselves with one of these each and every year. <laughs> Okay, that, uh, that doesn't sound like a lot of, I mean, it sounds like a lot One of people, of but these. compared to all of Americans, yeah, 6,000. Do you think that's like a lawnmower or a weed eater, weed I, whacker? I know when I'm out in the garden, there yeah. is, I always injure myself Do in you? some okay. way. Okay, I was thinking of outside <laughs> equipment just because of the time of year. Yeah. How about with like a toothpick? Oh, Maybe yeah. They oh, with yeah. A yeah. No, that definitely That's happens. Be my guess. Yeah, I like that one. What do you think? See, I was thinking like the stairs 
Oh, okay. <laughs> <The stairs. laughs> Just a very basic thing. A good Nate. tumble. Ooh, um, Anita. Oh, I, I got to say, there's a lot of paper cuts out mm. there. A piece of paper, maybe more than 6,000, but that's a great guess. Oh, yeah. Just even hearing that makes those. me cringe a little. All yeah. right. Melissa's with you, Nate. Hey, you there you go. Okay. I'm not alone there. I guess it's, <laughs> yeah, a pretty common guess. I uh, love that one, though. Yeah. Who, who knows? Maybe you just get, you jam it too hard in your teeth and you're like, ow. I don't know. <laughs> None of that. Please don't fall on it wrong. That would be terrible. All right. Marv says a wacky inflatable arm guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of our favorites. Watch out, though. Wack you. Take out yeah, nine. Will. At least it's kind of <laughs> soft, I guess. That's nice. <laughs> well, it depends on how hard the, the air is pumping through it, That's Nate. True. Those things can That's get true. going. Maybe a kite. Maybe a kite dives and hits you uh, from the from the sky. I don't All know. right. I like these. We're percolating on it, guys. If you think you know the answer, share your guesses on their Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS News This Morning, trying to get flood food flowing back out of Ukraine. The push from the U.S. to stop the Russian blockade. All right, 545, welcome back. Local forecast, this one for Homedale. Temperatures on your Thursday, about 88 degrees today. So it's going to be a warm one this afternoon. Uh, mainly sunny skies. We do have some high in the sky clouds passing by today. Tonight, uh, mostly to partly cloudy skies, 60 degrees for an overnight low. And then tomorrow, partly cloudy. Look at those toasty temperatures, about 91 in Homedale for the high. Yeah, don't forget the sunscreen or the water. Thank you, Nate. Well, the war in Ukraine, it continues this morning and Russian forces are concentrating their efforts in the east side of the country. Meantime, Ukrainian troops in the trenches on the sidelines of the fighting in Donetsk. Now they're trying to prevent flanking maneuvers. Even there, away from the focus of the fighting, soldiers are saying these trenches are still getting shelled each and every day. Well, the United Nations is now pushing to create a deal for Ukraine to export food and agricultural products again. Now, Russia has been reportedly blocking Ukraine's Black Sea exports. The UN Secretary General says the deal would allow grain exports to proceed through the Black Sea from Ukraine unimpeded. The UN says that without a deal, hundreds of millions of people in countries, developing countries, face the threat of a food crisis. Well, workers are taking down McDonald's Golden Arches across Russia, while a new owner of the now closed outlets are preparing to rebrand them under a different name. McDonald's, it shutters its Russian stores in March after the country invaded Ukraine. McDonald's Russia now plans to reopen. That's, the, that's where Russia's first McDonald's opened its doors back in 1990 after the fall of the Soviet Union. Well, before we get to weather, the 16th annual Evening in the Garden to benefit Boise's Valley Habitat for Humanity, it's happening today. The live and silent auction is at Far West, Far West pardon me, Landscape and Garden. That's out on State Street. It's from 5.30 to 9 o'clock. Up for grabs, we have rafting trips, getaways, artwork, and more, plus food and drink. Tickets are $50 or $500 for a table of eight. The money goes to building three or four houses a year for local families in need. Yeah, it's great to see what Habitat Humanity can do and the way they can put up those houses quickly. You know, many yeah. hands make light work and they yeah. really make that. And happen. I love that the uh, potential owners get to help build the home themselves, yeah. right? Take part in that. It gives them a sense of pride, I think, yeah. uh, in addition to the home ownership. So. Make it your own. Yeah, yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that. I do remember a story, though, where we had previous anchors try to participate and it was a little scary <laughs> giving them a nail gun and things. So. Oh, yeah, just. All right, way off topic off. there. But uh, yeah, let's kind of switch gears. Uh, maybe you're going to be out building something outside yeah. today. Weather's looking phenomenal. In fact, beautiful. Beautiful start to the day, seeing a little bit of color uh, off of some of those high clouds as the sun starting to come up this morning. Uh, we are going to continue to see mainly sunny skies. Temperatures in Boise, 54 degrees. Southeast winds at six miles an hour. Uh, feels like 54, which is nice. It is uh, pretty humid out there this morning, so it might feel a bit muggy. I know I had some condensation and things on my windshield, uh, on the outside of my windshield as I was driving uh, into work. So uh, plan on uh, feeling a little muggy. We're going to dry out nicely, though. 86 will be the high this afternoon with the sunny skies. Normal high is 70. Well above average on Friday as well. In fact, potentially our first 90 degree day of the season. Uh, partly cloudy conditions as moisture will stream in from the southwest. We have more changes arriving over the weekend. We'll drop a few degrees, if not about four degrees on Saturday, 86, with a slight chance of some showers and thunderstorms in the late afternoon and evening for the valleys. The northern mountain areas will get in on the action earlier in the day. And then showers and storms fairly widespread in nature on Sunday. In fact, we could see quite a bit of moisture, especially over the mountain areas, into the weekend. 65 on Monday, a few showers linger. Otherwise, clearing out Tuesday, Wednesday, should be back to about 80 degrees on Wednesday, so average highs 
Mountain folks, mid 70s today, tomorrow. Very comfortable today, tomorrow as well. Slight chance of a shower, maybe tomorrow. I think it'll stay to the north of us. Better chance again on Saturday afternoon and evening of showers and storms. We fall to 66 degrees. That's average 59 on Sunday. Could see some heavy rain uh, potential. In fact, we'll be watching some of the small streams and rivers. They could swell a little bit, of course, with some of the heavy precipitation. will be just 50 degrees. Snow levels down to about 6,000 feet over the weekend with a high of just 50 on Monday. Lingering shower activity as well. Oh gosh, Nate, as you say lingering, it reminds me of the cranberry song, Linger. Do you, do you know no, the song? No, I don't song? know the song. Are you going to sing okay. it for us? Well, oh. I don't know about that. Um, okay. Maybe one day, guys, but maybe that's what you're going to want to listen to on the way into work today. So okay. let's take a look outside for our traffic because CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, look outside this morning. Everything looking good. Smooth sailing on both our main roads, secondary roads, everything looking good. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, Italy may be going without one of their most iconic dishes. Why pasta costs are on the rise. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 553 on your Thursday, the U.S. It, we're not the only country dealing with rising costs. Now, spaghetti and tomato sauce, it's a staple in Italy, but the price of those two key ingredients is now skyrocketing. Barbie and Nadu visits the country to see the hard choices facing their business owners. Signora, buonasera. Spaghetti al pomodoro. Grazie. Prego. This is the quintessential Italian meal, spaghetti with tomato. But the price of this Italian staple has increased tremendously over the last year. To understand why the cost to produce pasta from durum wheat and tomato sauce from fresh tomatoes has gone up, we went directly to the source. Here at the Maestri Pastai Pasta Factory in southern Italy, owner Valentina Castiello tells us the price of some of the raw materials to make her pasta have jumped by 100 percent. She tells us her company is trying to find ways to absorb the excess, but some of it will go to the consumer. We have increased the price of our final product by 30 percent. The cost is high, but the consumer continues to buy the affordable products that everyone can use at home. The average Italian eats around 50 pounds of pasta every year. Castiello says to confront the rising cost of living, distributors are actually buying more inventory from her factory. Because even if the price of pasta goes up, it is still by far the most affordable way for many Italians to put food on the table. The rising costs range from packaging to electricity to fuel to transport these goods. But it isn't just pasta makers struggling to produce economical food. At this tomato farm near Rome that Dalila Marasca owns with her father and brother, things aren't much easier. She tells us that fertilizer costs alone have risen 150 percent over last year. They had to make a drastic decision to reduce the number of tomatoes they planted by 40 percent because they have no idea what the market will be like when these new tomato plants are ready to harvest. Marasca says the tomato is the base of the Italian diet during the summer as fresh produce and during the other seasons as canned products. The factors driving the prices of these fundamental Italian ingredients are complicated. First came the pandemic, then Russia's war in Ukraine, and now the uncertainty of what's next. All right, well, now that you're all hungry this morning, let's switch gears because this is bananas. An Illinois grocery store has a new Guinness world record. Take a look. It's the world's largest display of bananas. Now, it took up the store about three days and around 70,000 pounds of bananas to create the display. The winning fruit will now be given away to customers and to a local food bank. Going for a good cause. All right, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning. Boise police draw their guns. What's next for this man after he was taken into custody at gunpoint? Plus, the FBI raid at a California man's home after threatening Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh. What led up to that attack? 
You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local weather and news continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, hearings on January 6th, Capitol riot, it heads to TV tonight. What the panel is expected to present to viewers. Plus a local nonprofit looking for their stolen equipment, the impact on Life's Kitchen and how you can help. Plus the right time to buy a house in the Treasure Valley, why some lenders are saying it's right now. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Good morning and thank you for joining us. A live looks of some first light on this June 9th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson, joined by meteorologist Nate Larson and a gorgeous, beautiful blue start to your <laughs> Thursday morning. That's a gorgeous view, Nate. That's right. Yeah, it was a nice look from downtown. This is a look from on top of uh, Bogus Basin, the Pine Creek chair camera off towards the east. We do have a little bit of high cloud cover. Otherwise, yeah, we're going to see uh, quite a bit of sunlight this morning as it's coming up. I think the image is just a little bit delayed sunrise for Boise just after six o'clock. Uh, this morning, so we're right near there uh, across the Treasure Valley. We are seeing a little bit of high cloud cover across all of southwest Idaho, eastern Oregon. No showers, though, in our area. There's a little bit just up north and west of us. We are going to see, again, mainly sunny skies throughout the day today. It should be gorgeous. This is about 2 o'clock this afternoon. As we get into the evening hours, yep, little change. Warmer temperatures today with our flow that's going to be in place. Note that some of the northern areas just staying north of us could see more cloud cover maybe a sprinkle or two on Friday. Tomorrow, though, little change for us, partly cloudy skies and even warmer temperatures than what we're going to be seeing today. So what are we going to see today? Well, 65 around 9 o'clock as you head outside your adventure cast. Yeah, if you want to grab that mountain bike, hit up some of the foothill trails, maybe just hike them. They'll be pretty comfortable through lunchtime, about 75 around noon. And then we're getting warmer this afternoon. In fact, a big jump from yesterday, a high of 86 this afternoon. Sarah. Yeah, looking forward to that warm up. Lots of sunshine. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News, News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. This is a live look at your morning commute along I-84. Everything is looking good, both on our main roads and secondary roads. When you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. The House panel investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is going to prime time tonight. They'll begin with a series of televised public hearings that will present witness accounts and videos from the riot nearly a year and a half ago. I can say that certainly one of the themes that we will be fleshing out is the, the fact that in advance of the 6th uh, that there was an understanding of the propensity for violence that day. However, many GOP lawmakers have been sharply critical of that panel, calling it overly partisan. This committee is not about seeking the truth. It is a smear campaign against President Donald Trump. The committee has interviewed around 1,000 witnesses and received over 140,000 documents in connection with the attack and its coordination. Now tonight, committee members are expected to hear from a U.S. Capitol Police officer and a filmmaker who documented movements around the Capitol that morning. Well, new this morning, federal agents raided the home of a man in California. He's being charged with an attempt to murder Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Now, an affidavit filed in court says the man brought a gun with the intent to break into the justice's home. Now, it states that he took a cab to Kavanaugh's house with a backpack full of weapons. And this is actually the suspicious part. He then walked down the street and called 911 for help. Shocked that it was right here. And... Uh... A nice family, good neighbors. Court documents state that the man was upset about the leaked Supreme Court draft decision to possibly overturn Roe v. Wade and was concerned that Kavanaugh would vote to overturn gun laws. No word on why he called the police on himself. Developing news here in Idaho, an Oregon man now facing charges of aggravated assault, resisting officers, and possession of controlled substance. Now, this is video from around four, af four yesterday afternoon. It was out on Shaw Mountain Road, just north of Boise. 
Boise police pulled out their guns as they were taking in the man. They say the man pulled a gun on a tow truck driver, and they say he pointed the gun after an argument. Well, Ada County Sheriff's Office needs your help in identifying a man who threw a rock, breaking a window at an Ada County Courthouse, or at the Ada County Courthouse, rather. Take a look at this photo. Police say the man it was com committed the vandalism just after midnight on May 19th. If you do have any information on who this man is, call the Ada County Sheriff's Office. A local nonprofit, they need your help finding the thieves that stole their equipment. CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains that Life's Kitchen needs it back to help keep serving our community. You, you try to understand why someone, whether we're a nonprofit or not, would invade your property and take something that's that's been there. What? Why? Tammy Johnson, executive director for Life's Kitchen, was shocked after she found out multiple pieces of cooking equipment and a trailer were stolen from them. We brought it out this year, used it for the first time at Idaho Gives, and uh, parked it in the same spot we've parked it in for almost a little over a year since we've been at our Fairview location, and um, noticed that it was gone. Some items included griddles, folding tables, propane tanks, and much more. A costly loss. To replace, it'll probably be around 4000 or to 5000 by the time we're all done with the trailer and the equipment that was inside it. But it's not just a financial hit. Since 2003, Life's Kitchen has been serving second chances, giving young adults the opportunity to receive life skills in job training. They spend about 650 hours and they're working in the kitchen. They work in the back of the house, front of the house, on the line, the banquet room, learning every aspect of the business. Johnson said the Hot Tots trailer played a big role in that. That was one of their ways to say this will be an opportunity that, they, that your young adults may be able to look at this and go, can I do something like this? Michaela Elich, CBS 2 News. If you know anything about the theft, Boise Police ask that you call them or leave a tip for Crime Stoppers. That's 208-343-COPS. Mortgage rates, they're on the rise, and it's a challenging market, especially for our first-time home buyers. A difference in 2% of an interest rate could be anywhere from 400 to $700 a month in a, in a monthly payment, which really can be quite a bit and unfortunately has priced so many home buyers out of the market, unfortunately. Forecasters, they don't anticipate a drop for at least a couple of years, but while fewer people are applying for a mortgage, more homes in Idaho are going up for sale and staying on the market longer, typically a good thing for buyers. We are definitely seeing uh, lower offers. We're seeing price reductions and we're seeing seller concessions for sure, but that's normal. So what does this mean for you? Lenders say rates may be significantly higher than last year, but say they're still historically very low. And with more sellers willing to take lower offers, you may be locking yourself into a better payment plan in the future. Now, their best advice is to just find out what you're pre-qualified for first before you even start looking into homes. Well, a summer free meal kickoff event for West Ada schools, it's happening today. They're offering free meals for kids under 18 at several spots all summer long. The kickoff, it's at Tully Park over in Meridian. That's off Linder Road. It runs from noon to 1245. There'll be raffles as well as lots of fun. You can see where and when to get free summer meals. Head to IdahoNews.com. And as we know, summer, it's one of the hardest times of the year for families struggling with food insecurity, even here in the Gem State. And that's why CBS2 is teaming up with the Western Idaho Fair. We're raising money for the Idaho Food Bank. It's to mark the fair's 125th anniversary. We're asking for organizations or individuals to donate $125 to the food bank. And for every dollar donated, the food bank, they can actually stretch that into four meals per dollar. You'll find a link to donate. Head on over to IdahoNews.com. And we want to say thank you to our community. Thanks to your generosity, our hygiene drive came to a very successful close. We partnered with News Talk KBOI to collect donations for the Salvation Army, and many of you stopped by CBS2 with everything from shampoo, soaps, toothpaste, mouthwash, you name it. Now, it's all going to local families in need, so if you still want to help, there is time. You can donate money through IdahoNews.com. Again, thank you for all your generosity and your kindness definitely making a difference.
Yeah, one thing that will make a difference today is that sunshine. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful yeah. uh, today. Making up, I guess, for all the cloud cover, kind of the ominous feel yesterday. Yeah, it was. Fortunately, we had that uh, hygiene drive to keep us going, keep yeah. us happy, right? Because it was nice to see all the people come out. Yes, so, it was. Yeah, so sunny skies uh, today, a nice change. And let's kind of talk about the next weather maker. So a bit of a warm up uh, through today, tomorrow. In fact, much warmer than yesterday's 72. Yeah, we kind of uh, didn't quite stick to the forecast with all the clouds and even some of the drizzle we had sticking around a lot of the valley. Today, though, warming temperatures, in fact, tomorrow even hotter, could hit our first 90 degree day uh, on Friday, so it could be quite toasty out there. Uh, tracking a potent storm, though, for the weekend, it is going to bring quite a bit of moisture, it's looking like, beginning late Saturday, I think, for all areas, earlier on up north in the mountain areas in the afternoon on Saturday, and then heavy rains possible on Sunday as our storm system is going to be tapping into uh, what could be some subtropical moisture. So it's going to be a pretty moist system overall. Uh, of course, roller coaster ride with temperatures as we are expecting another storm system to slide in over the weekend from 86 today. Again, possibly 90 tomorrow back to 86 on Saturday, then just 70 on Sunday. Not too bad, but then it's yeah, well below average on Monday, 65, about 15 degrees cooler than normal as we kick off the next work week. Southwest flow in place currently again a few high in the sky clouds expected today, partly cloudy tomorrow. Note the band of moisture just staying to the north of us. So yeah, some good rainfall across a lot of the Pacific Northwest. And then as we get closer towards the weekend, that band of moisture will start to inch its way towards Idaho and get ushered in entirely as that area of low pressure starts to move in off the Pacific Ocean. In fact, this is Sunday afternoon, fairly socked in or soggy as far as showers go across the state of Idaho. The core of the storm rotates through late Sunday into early Monday. Snow levels will likely drop to about 6,000 feet as we get into early next week and again we could see periods of heavy rain and we're expecting thunderstorms off and on on Sunday and so yeah kind of a wild weekend quiet weather leading up to it at least yeah hold on tight for that roller coaster <laughs> yeah. wow it's gonna be a nice dip uh, keeping the wardrobe handy again the jackets I the know. pants I guess I'm not done with those S pants yet sweaters aren't going That's away right. just yet all right folks you heard it here first let's get a check outside this morning for your morning commute and get a check with Ron O'Brien from the News Talk Traffic Center good morning Ron Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, folks. Getting out the door, no big surprises. It is very quiet as far as traffic goes. Pretty light this time of the morning. You can see in some of the camera shots. And I just checked uh, Highway 44 at Highway 16. Pretty empty there for the most part. Nothing uh, going. Very light traffic. The widening continues in that area between Highway 16 and Linder. And careful through other various construction zones as well, of course. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all of our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS News, a marine plane crash in California has people searching for answers. What we know about the investigation as of this morning. Plus, the president is at the summit of the Americas. What he's asking from other world leaders this morning. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. That was the Guinness record for this is just 13 seconds. Yeah, we had lots of good guesses. I honestly thought it was going to be a Rubik's Cube. I know many people who were able to do it behind their backs, blindfolded. You name it. The answer, though, the shortest music concert. OK, now for our question of the day today. Surprisingly, over 6,000 Americans, they injured themselves with one of these each and every year. OK, folks. What is it? Six fifteen on your Thursday. Welcome back. Local forecast. This one for Idaho City. Temperatures again today. We're warming up from yesterday. Eighty one is expected to be the high. Should be gorgeous out there. Mainly sunshine tonight. Fifty six. Partly cloudy tomorrow. A couple degrees warmer. Expecting a little more cloud cover as well. Eighty four degrees in Idaho City on Friday. Thank you, Nate. New this morning, four U.S. Marines were killed after a U.S. Marine plane crash. Now, five people were on that plane. The United States Marine Corps says it crashed near Glamis, California yesterday afternoon. This is a view of that. Now, some rumors were circulating online that the aircraft had nuclear material on board, but the military says that wasn't the case. Now, we have no word yet on the fate of that fifth person on that plane. President Joe Biden is at the Summit of the Americas meeting. He's calling for a renewed focus on democracy, but some world leaders are already upset with the president. John Lawrence reports. President Joe Biden is hosting close to two dozen leaders from Latin America at the ninth Summit of the Americas. Critical work continues at this year's summit. 
a place for solutions. The president is calling for cooperation and a renewed focus on the importance of a government by the people. We have an opportunity for us to come together around some bold ideas, ambitious actions, and to demonstrate to our people the incredible power of democracies to deliver concrete benefits and make life better for everyone, everyone. Biden also previewed a new economic framework that his administration hopes other countries will take part in over the next few months. Together, we have to invest in making sure our trade is sustainable and responsible in creating supply chains that are more resilient, more secure, and more sustainable. But there is an elephant in the room. This event is just like his approach to Latin America has been since he got to the White House, uh, weak, disorganized, and misguided. The autocratic governments of Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua were excluded from the three-day summit, and that caused some other leaders, including the president of Mexico, to boycott. Our Latin American allies are highly frustrated. I'm John Lawrence reporting. <laughs> All right, Nate, running to the desk this right. morning. How's it going? <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I love that I called you Losing out. track of time. Yeah, no, hey, well, I need to, I've been told by a lot of viewers that I need to try to keep you in line, but yeah. I know it's uh, it's not as hard as it seems, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to keep me in place. Tell me where to go and what no. to do all the time. No, so. no, no. You're the one who tells us what to do, and I know that yeah. the weather that's heading our way yep. is going to be beautiful, but you need to hold on because, yeah, we're going Things back down. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. get a couple of days of uh, just really great weather, uh, perfect for this time of year, and then things start to really change over the weekend. So yeah. looking outside right now, one of those uh, perfect oh. times this morning, looking at, again, mainly clear skies. Temperatures are comfortable as you head out as well. Uh, we're a little cooler than yesterday, but not too bad. 54 degrees. We'll have light winds out of the south southeast at 7 miles an hour. Uh, dew point at 48. So it might feel a little bit more humid out there this morning. We do have more moisture here near the surface from uh, some of the shower activity that we had yesterday as well as, yeah, we've had just more rain in general. Soil moisture uh, is present versus being very dry out this time of year typically. So 86 uh, right now uh, is our forecast for the high this afternoon. Looking at 90 tomorrow, so a big warm up into the end of the week. Partly cloudy skies tomorrow. Little change from today tomorrow. Normal high is 79. We'll start to see changes on Saturday though. Increasing cloud cover. A chance of some afternoon, if not late afternoon and evening showers. Timing on it still kind of up in the air with this weekend storm system. Uh, what we are certain of is going to be quite potent. It's trap, uh, tapping into subtropical moisture and so we're expecting a good amount of rain. In fact, uh, mountain areas an inch or more uh, precipitation Sunday into Monday. Uh, 65 degrees on uh, Monday here in the valley. A few showers linger. 70 on Tuesday, 80 on Wednesday. Even in the Treasure Valley, we can see a good half of an inch to an inch of precipitation with what we're expecting to see. We might see a concern for some flooding with some of the rain that we are going to be seeing out there, especially in small streams. They could start to swell, especially with what moisture is expected to fall. Temperatures fall. Speaking of that, from mid 70s today, tomorrow in the mountain areas to just the mid to upper 50s into early next week. In fact, just 50 is the forecast right now for Monday. Snow levels will start to drop as well to about 6,000 feet. So above the mountain valley floors for the <laughs> most part, climbing back to the mid to upper 60s by Wednesday. Yeah, I need to decide what I'm going to do today outside. Uh, it's yeah, just soak it up. Beautiful. You said hammock something, laying yes, out and enjoying the sun? a little studying in some hammock studying work. Studying in the hammock, yeah. okay. Still I'll in school, it. so can't fully, you know, get outside and go <laughs> running or up in the mountains. And lots of things to do, though, folks, um, so I hope you do. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Nate. Let's get a look outside this morning on our traffic cams because everything looking pretty good. But let's get an actual check from the News Talk Traffic Center with our own Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Doing uh, okay so far. Yep, volumes just aren't that heavy. Uh, we'll probably see a little increase after about 6.30 for a pre-7 o'clock rush of some sort. But uh, real quiet. 7 o'clock hour always means busier traffic. Uh, sun glare to deal with in uh, some locations already. Sun getting ready to come up, but nothing big going, even away from the freeways. Pretty quiet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, protecting babies from the coronavirus. What one new study revealed that could help keep newborns safe from all sorts of illnesses. And later, the FBI raiding a home in California after a threat against a Supreme Court justice. What led up to that attempted attack?
Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 624 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Breakthrough research could hold the secret to protecting babies against everything from COVID to cancer. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares what's been discovered. Hey there, everybody. We've known for a while now that even in COVID-19, pregnant women produce what scientists call super antibodies to protect newborns, especially when given the vaccines. Now a new study just released in the journal Nature explains how. It turns out that when a woman is pregnant, what researchers call the sugar coating on the outside of antibodies gets what you might describe as superhuman powers to get into a cell to protect a growing baby. What we found is that pregnancy changes that coating, that sugar coating of the antibodies in a very, very subtle way with profound implications for expanding their scope of protection by uniquely stimulating babies' immune cells in a very special way. In laboratory experiments, a team of researchers led by Dr. Sing Sing Wei and Dr. John Erickson of Ohio's Cincinnati Children's Hospital say it's sort of like a switch gets turned on when mom gets pregnant to pass the protection to baby. That protection often lasts for months, it appears, even after a child is born. So why is this such an important discovery? There's a lot of, I think, implications here. So one would be, you know, to be able to turn the switch on, we know you need to at least have those antibodies in the first place. What's more is that since antibodies help fight off a specific bacteria, virus, or foreign substance in the blood, it's possible this information may also hold the secret to protecting more babies in the future from everything from COVID-19 to cancer. This is a, a kind of a new way that antibodies, these uh, sugars on the antibodies can be changed and how that might affect a lot of these other biological therapeutics that we're using, I think also uh, deserves a lot of study. Researchers now saying this is just more evidence that recommended vaccines that produce antibodies in pregnancy are so critical for a baby's future health, especially in those first few months of life. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, Boise police draw their guns. What's next for this man after he was taken into custody at gunpoint? And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 at 6 o'clock. We have the Capitol assault hearings through at least the 8 o'clock hour. Then we have Bull at 8 and 9 o'clock. Then you can join Brent Huntsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. That question, surprisingly, over 6,000 Americans injure themselves with one of these every year. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, hearings on the January 6th Capitol riot head to TV tonight. What the panel is expected to present to viewers. Plus, a local nonprofit looking for their stolen equipment, the impact on Life's Kitchen, and how you can help. Plus, the right time to buy a house in the Treasure Valley, why some lenders say it's right now. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. All right, folks. Hey, good Thursday morning. Beautiful conditions. This is the city of Boise air quality camera across the Treasure Valley. You can see mostly clear skies. We do have a few high in the sky clouds uh, over the region, but temperatures. Yeah, we're a little cooler than normal. You'll feel the difference as you step outside this morning versus yesterday. 54 right now in Boise, Nampa 50, uh, 55 Mountain Home, McCall sitting at 47 degrees. Good morning to you. A west southwest flow is going to be in place today. Not much uh, if any moisture is going to be in the region. In fact, we're expecting it to stay to the north of us with high pressure in place. Uh, yesterday, after all the cloud cover, we're going to see a nice uh, makeup day with mostly sunny skies today. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies. Note the moisture, the band of it inching closer to our region. Could start to see a little bit of shower activity, just clipping portions of northern Baker County. Friday's a pretty quiet day overall, though, but then Saturday, that shower activity is going to slide into our area. So enjoy today, enjoy tomorrow. Adventure Cast calling for, yeah, maybe a great day to grab a tea time. Comfortable temperatures at lunchtime, just mid 70s. We're warmer today by quite a bit. In fact, we were just low 70s yesterday. We'll be about 86 for the high here in town. 
Sounds great. Thank you, Nate. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Looks looking good out there this morning. Definitely grab those sunglasses before heading out. Everything is running smoothly, though, so when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. The House panel investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is going to prime time tonight. They'll begin with a series of televised public hearings that will present witness accounts and videos from the riot nearly a year and a half ago. I can say that certainly one of the themes that we will be fleshing out is the the fact that in advance of the 6th uh, that there was an understanding of the propensity for violence that day. However, many GOP lawmakers have been sharply critical of the panel, calling it overly partisan. This committee is not about seeking the truth. It is a smear campaign against President Donald Trump. The committee has interviewed about 1,000 witnesses and received over 140,000 documents. That's in connection with the attacks and its coordination. Tonight, committee members are expected to hear from a U.S. Capitol police officer and a filmmaker who documented mo movements around the Capitol that morning. Well, federal agents raided the home of a man in California. He's being charged with an attempt to murder Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. An affidavit filed in court says the man brought a gun with an intent to break into the justice's home. Now it states that he took a cab to Kavanaugh's house with a backpack full of weapons, and this is the suspicious part. He then walked down the street and called 911 for help. Shock that it was right here and uh, a nice family, good neighbors. Court documents state the man was upset about the recent Supreme Court leak of the draft decision to possibly overturn Roe v. Wade. He was also concerned that Kavanaugh would vote to overturn gun laws. No word on why he called police on himself. Developing news here in Idaho, an Oregon man now facing charges of aggravated assault, resisting officers, and possession of a controlled substance. This video from around 4 in the afternoon yesterday was up on Shaw Mountain Road out in North Boise. Police pulled out their guns as they were taking in a man that they say pulled a gun on a tow truck driver. He pointed the gun at the driver following an argument. Ada County sheriffs need your help in identifying a man who threw a rock breaking a window down at the Ada County Courthouse. Take a look at this photo. Police say this man committed the vandalism just after midnight on May 19th. Now you want to take a good look. If you have any information on who this is, call the Ada County Sheriff's Office. A local nonprofit is needing your help finding the thieves that stole their equipment. And CBS 2's Michaela Elich explains that Life's Kitchen needs it back to continue serving our community. You, you try to understand why someone, whether we're nonprofit or not, would invade your property and take something that's that's been there. What? Why? Tammy Johnson, executive director for Life's Kitchen, was shocked after she found out multiple pieces of cooking equipment and a trailer were stolen from them. We brought it out this year, used it for the first time at Idaho Gives, and uh, parked it in the same spot we've parked it in for almost a little over a year since we've been at our Fairview location, and um, noticed that it was gone. Some items included griddles, folding tables, propane tanks, and much more. A costly loss. To replace it'll probably be around 4000 or to 5000 by the time we're all done with the trailer and the equipment that was inside it. But it's not just a financial hit. Since 2003, Life's Kitchen has been serving second chances giving young adults the opportunity to receive life skills and job training. They spend about 650 hours and they're working in the kitchen. They work in the back of the house, front of the house, on the line, the banquet room, learning every aspect of the business. Johnson said the Hot Tots trailer played a big role in that. That was one of their ways to say this would be an opportunity that, they, that your young adults may be able to look at this and go, can I do something like this? Michaela Elich, CBS 2 News. If you do know anything about the theft, you're asked to call Boise Police or you can leave a tip with Crime Stoppers. That's 208-343-COPS. Mortgage rates are on the rise and it's a challenging market, especially for our first time home buyers. A difference in 2% of an interest rate could be anywhere from 400 to $700 a month in a, in a monthly payment, which really can be quite a bit and unfortunately has priced 
so many home buyers out of the market, unfortunately. Forecasters, they don't anticipate a drop for at least a couple more years, but fewer people are applying for mortgages. More homes in Idaho are going up for sale and staying on the market for longer. They say it's a good thing for buyers. We are definitely seeing uh, lower offers. We're seeing price reductions and we're seeing seller concessions for sure, but that's normal. So what does this all mean? Lenders say rates may be significantly higher than last year, but they're still historically very low. And with more sellers willing to take lower offers, you may be locking yourself into a better payment plan in the future. Now, their best advice, though, is to find out what you're pre-qualified for first before you even start looking at homes. Well, a summer free meal kickoff event for West Ada schools is happening as of today. They're offering free meals for kids under 18 at several spots all summer long. The kickoff, it's at Tully Park in Meridian. That's just off Linder Road. It runs from noon to 1245. Now, see where and when to get free summer meals. All you have to do is head to IdahoNews.com. Yeah, oh, I love those free summer meals, especially for the kids. They, they look forward to it. You get to get outside and play and you get some goodies along the way. So. Yeah, not only that, a little bit yeah. of congregation for them also to get together, you know, with, with their other playmates as well. That's so, right. yeah, today's going to be a perfect day for the uh, kickoff, I guess, with that program as we've yeah. got lots of sunshine, beautiful weather today. Uh, let's kind of talk about the next weather maker. So, as we get towards uh, Friday, uh, yeah, nice to have the end of the week. Uh, we do have a nice warm up in store. In fact, temperatures are quite a bit warmer from yesterday today, and we're going to be even hotter tomorrow. Possibly our first 90 degree day for Boise. That's in the forecast right now, but the forecasted high is 90. We're going to deal with a little bit of cloud cover. We might get just uh, shy of that tomorrow. We'll kind of have to wait and see. But right now, uh, warming up. Southwest flows in place. It's all ahead of a storm system for the weekend. We're tracking what could be a rather potent storm system, trap, uh, tapping into subtropical moisture. And so it's going to bring quite a bit of rain, it looks like, late Saturday into Sunday, especially over the mountain areas. Uh, one to two inches of rain over some of the mountain areas. And we could even see up to an inch of rain in some of the valley locations on Sunday. So, yeah, going to be quite soggy, a bit of a soaker out there. Roller coaster, as far as temperatures go, of course, with that big storm system on the horizon, we're in the mid to upper 80s today, about 90 tomorrow, back uh, to near where we are today on Saturday. And then we slide Sunday and Monday to just mid 60s on Monday for the high. Future clouds and radar again showing the moisture is at bay today, tomorrow. It's going to be off to the north and west of us under the southwest flow. The ridge still in place. The ridge starts to get knocked down as moisture starts to move inland on Saturday. Uh, the core of the storm system still out in the ocean until we get into Sunday. As we head into Sunday afternoon, widespread showers are expected across uh, all of Idaho. The core of the storm system continues to rotate right through the gem state into early Monday, keeping showers in the forecast. Snow levels down to about 6,000 feet. Again, overall precipitation amounts uh, right now in the forecast in the mountain areas, one to two inches of rain, a good half of an inch to an inch of moisture in the Treasure Valley. Uh, in fact, here's kind of a look at what one of the models are saying. This is kind of a lower resolution model, not only showing about a half of an inch for Boise, I wouldn't be surprised if we're closer to an inch of rain as we get into early next week. Yeah, excited to kind of see a nice little soak up for the mountains. Yeah, going to be a bit of a soaker out there for sure. Yeah, we'll keep you updated with flooding as well. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, a small Something. chance for maybe some flash flooding or, of course, the rivers are going to swell if you get an inch, two inches of rain up in the mountain areas over one day. So Yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep you updated. Yes. Thank you, Nate. Just wanted to keep that top of mind with yep. more rain heading our way. But let's take a live look outside this morning because CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI, we bring it team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there this morning from the News Talk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? Well, we've got a little uh, volume on the increase, I-84, but nothing major going. Minimal, if any, merge crowding. So far, that's been the case this morning in uh, Meridian, for example, around uh, Meridian Road mainly. I just took another peek at Highway uh, 44 near Highway 16. Not much going there quite yet as far as build up. Down to one lane each direction using what would normally be the eastbound side of the highway between Highway 16 and Linder. So, spot you got to watch out for, but no significant delays yet. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. The question is, surprisingly, over 6,000 Americans injure themselves with one of these every year. 
All right, Nate, what this are we thinking? This is toughy, yeah, because it's surprisingly. surprisingly. So it's like, it's gotta be something that's common. Uh, I threw out just basic things like maybe vacuuming your house because it says surprisingly, and that's I, not that many Americans. I have injured myself yeah, vacuuming maybe you, once or twice. You maybe yeah. overextend with that uh, reach out to the vacuum and you just pull a muscle. I don't know. I know. I'm trying to think of the different thing. I mean, maybe getting into your car. I yes. Like sometimes that's it. Or you said getting out of bed. Just We're getting, getting out of bed. bed. We're just being in bed. It can be rough, guys. Okay. We're just <laughs> being honest be here this morning. It's a safe place. It's probably just one of the old mattresses that has a spring <laughs> jabbing up into your back, oh, yeah. right? The exposed yeah. coil or something. Good morning. All right. Richard <laughs> says a toothbrush. Okay. Definitely possible. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I can be an aggressive brusher. Oh, Kathy, this is a great, uh, yes, a dog leash. Mm. The amount of times I've snapped myself with my own dog leash. Yeah. Or I could say maybe the leash gets wrapped around your legs and like you trip or something because oh, yeah. they're doing circles around you. That's I would for those say that might be owners. more than 6,000 people though. I don't oh, know. Corey, a champagne cork. Okay. Yes. Got to be careful where you are pointing that thing. Keep that in mind. It, looks, it seems dangerous. Yeah, we've only done it a couple <laughs> times, but it just goes flying. <laughs> yeah, it's actually one of my favorite. But yeah, try, try to be safe if you are going to be celebrating <laughs> in that way. Okay, folks, if you think you know the answer, you still have time to share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses and, again, reveal the answer at the end of the show, just 15 minutes right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, trying to get food flowing back out of Ukraine. The push from the UN to stop Russia's blockade. All right, 645 on your Thursday. Welcome back. Local forecast this one for Homedale. Temperatures out in the western part of the valley. Yeah, we're heating up today. 88 degrees is expected for the high. Mainly sunny skies, gorgeous weather out there for today. Overnight, 60 degrees, uh, mostly to partly cloudy skies. We're going to see a, a little more cloud cover on Friday, but warmer temperatures. In fact, we're getting hot, 91 degrees out in Homedale. Heating up in Homedale. Thank you, Nate. Well, turning now to the war in Ukraine as it continues this morning, Russian forces are concentrating their efforts in the eastern part of the country. Meantime, Ukrainian troops in the trenches on the sidelines of the fighting in Donetsk are trying to prevent flanking maneuvers. Even here, away from the focus of all the fighting going on, soldiers say these trenches are still getting shelled each and every day. And the United Nations is now pushing to create a deal for Ukraine to export food and agricultural products once again. Russia has been reportedly blocking Ukraine's Black Sea exports for quite some time. The UN Secretary General says the deal would allow grain exports to proceed through the Black Sea from Ukraine unimpeded. The UN says that without a deal, hundreds of millions of people in developing countries could face the threat of a food crisis. Well, before we get to weather, the 16th annual Evening in the Garden to benefit Boise Valley Habitat for Humanity. It's happening today. The live and silent auction will be at Far West Landscape and Garden. That's on State Street happening from 530 to 9 o'clock. Now up for grabs, we have rafting trips, getaways, artwork, and even more. There's also food and drink. Tickets are $50 or $500 for a table of eight. The money goes towards building three or four houses a year for local families in need. So quick cool to stuff. good evening to be out and about uh, yeah. raising money for the Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity. It's going to be gorgeous. Yeah, a beautiful day. Today. I mean, you can't beat these temperatures, Nate. <laughs> you, re you really can. It's yeah. not even getting up to, you know, we're not getting up into the mid 90s no. or upper 90s, staying right where we want it's and then that, finding a little cool. Uh, it's that uh, the Goldilocks, right? The perfect yeah. bowl of porridge today. Not too hot, not too <laughs> cool, right in the middle. Uh, outside, gorgeous already this morning. This is a look from downtown. The studio, some high clouds. Otherwise, yeah, you're heading outside to the 50s. So we're a little cooler than normal this morning, but we're we're going to be a little bit above average this afternoon, so kind of fun how that works. South southeast wind at seven miles an hour, so the southeast flow or southwest flow, excuse me, that's in place uh, at the higher elevations is going to help increase our temperatures today to about 86 degrees. So we should be really nice and mild, if not uh, getting a little warm out there. Normal high is 79. Toasty temperatures in store Friday. We're going to continue our warming trend. That'll be our uh, peak temperature, essentially. That'll be the top of the roller coaster ride. Now we're going to slide into next week all the way down to 65 for the high. We have a uh, potent storm system. It will bring a cold front into the area on Sunday. Widespread showers and storms are expected Sunday, but we have a chance for some afternoon, late afternoon, I should say, showers and thunderstorms. Even for the valley, northern mountain areas will get in on the action earlier in the day. A few showers on Monday linger as we uh, bottom out at 65, 70 on Tuesday. Should be back near 80 degrees on Wednesday with sunny skies. Mountain forecast, mid 70s, very comfortable today, tomorrow. Gorgeous weather, enjoy it. We drop to 66 on Saturday, plan on showers and thunderstorms. Uh, expect rain 
Lightning also possible on Sunday. Heavy rain is also possible. Those northern mountain areas could see up to two inches of moisture. So a possible flash flooding could be a concern. Of course, small rivers and streams are going to swell. And so we're going to be watching for some of that potential. Uh, hopefully we don't see anything too significant, but rain showers continue into Monday. Snow levels down to about 6,000 feet and then we start to dry out through Wednesday. So very soggy in our mountain areas this weekend. Yeah, maybe a good day to head up to the foothills. Yeah, today is certainly a good day. Today, <laughs> well, tomorrow. And speaking of which, you saw our own Denny Hawkins uh, up in the local foothills. Local TV legend. Yeah, Denny Hawkins <laughs> out in the foothills yesterday on the mountain bike. It was fun. Yeah, she's out there every day. So yeah, if you guys do see her, <laughs> make sure to say hi. We definitely are missing she's her. She's made it. All, All right, right. <laughs> let's switch to traffic because yeah. it is getting a little bit more higher volumes out there this morning. Let's get a check of what's actually happening out there with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hey, Ron. Good morning. Good morning. Unfortunately, we've got a crash now that has happened uh, just in the last few minutes. ID4 eastbound. It's just before that Eagle Road exit. You're coming in, get ready to make the bend in ID4. And uh, looks like a vehicle at least sticking into the left lane. A couple of vehicles on the left shoulder. But starting to become an impact. ID4 eastbound delays developing near the Meridian exit to just before the Eagle exit on I-84. Heads up on that. And elsewhere, relatively quiet. Volumes aren't that heavy on freeway routes quite yet. From the News Talk KVOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure to turn on News Talk KVOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM to keep you updated with our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS2 News, Italy may be going without one of their most iconic dishes. Why pasta costs are on the rise. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 6.53 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The U.S., not the only country dealing with high rising costs. Spaghetti and tomato sauce. It's a staple of Italy. We all know this. But the price of those two key ingredients is now skyrocketing. Now, we have a reporter visiting that country to see the hard choices facing business owners. Signora, buonasera. Spaghetti al pomodoro. Grazie. Prego. This is the quintessential Italian meal, spaghetti with tomato. But the price of this Italian staple has increased tremendously over the last year. To understand why the cost to produce pasta from durum wheat and tomato sauce from fresh tomatoes has gone up, we went directly to the source. Here at the Maestri Pastai Pasta Factory in southern Italy, owner Valentina Castiello tells us the price of some of the raw materials to make her pasta have jumped by 100 percent. She tells us her company is trying to find ways to absorb the excess, but some of it will go to the consumer. We have increased the price of our final product by 30 percent. The cost is high, but the consumer continues to buy the affordable products that everyone can use at home. The average Italian eats around 50 pounds of pasta every year. Castiello says to confront the rising cost of living, distributors are actually buying more inventory from her factory. Because even if the price of pasta goes up, it is still by far the most affordable way for many Italians to put food on the table. The rising costs range from packaging to electricity to fuel to transport these goods. But it isn't just pasta makers struggling to produce economical food. At this tomato farm near Rome that Dalila Marasca owns with her father and brother, things aren't much easier. She tells us that fertilizer costs alone have risen 150 percent over last year. They had to make a drastic decision to reduce the number of tomatoes they planted by 40 percent because they have no idea what the market will be like when these new tomato plants are ready to harvest. Marasca says the tomato is the base of the Italian diet during the summer as fresh produce and during the other seasons as canned products. The factors driving the prices of these fundamental Italian ingredients are complicated. First came the pandemic, then Russia's war in Ukraine, and now the uncertainty of what's next. 
Ahead on CBS Mornings, history will be made in Washington tonight with a primetime hearing about the January 6th attack. We'll break down how we got here and what's at stake. Also, major drama in the golf world as more big names sign up for a Saudi-backed league. Why some of the best players in the world are taking big money to play and what's behind all the controversy. And Broadway stars Darren Chris and Julianne Huff join us in the studio. They will tell us what to expect when they host the Tony Awards Act One, an exclusive first hour of the award show on Paramount+. Plus. We'll see you at 7. All right, well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question, surprisingly, over 6,000 Americans, they injure themselves with one of these every uh, year. I'm very right. curious to see what this is. I have no Number idea. Two. I was saying vacuuming. Yeah. Like a dog door. A dog All right, door. let's see. Oh, okay, the answer is a pillow. A pillow. Like putting the pillowcase on, that can be a challenge. We'll look it up. Stay safe yeah. out there today, guys, and we'll see you back here at 11. <laughs> Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI.